Okay folks, we're going to have a quick look at I'm doing a couple of civil rights videos because they're a bit quicker to do than the Nazis ones. This one's going to be about um, what was going on with civil rights uh, before the 1950s because I think it's an area that people may struggle with a little bit. So what you saw was um, by the time the end of World War II happens, many black Americans, not all, but a lot of black Americans are still living in the South. Um, where their families had probably worked as slaves. There hasn't been a lot of movement from the 1860s to 1945 for some black Americans. Now, um, something that we're going to touch on, and which is going to become important when we're looking at the 50s in particular, was this separate but equal law. And this came about in 1896. And it basically says that racial segregation can happen um, as long as the facilities were separate but equal, <coughs> which will be wheeled out frequently when looking at the bid to desegregate schools. All right, now, um, what you find is white Americans, particularly in the South, are the ones calling the shots, they have the control, and uh, the KKK alongside this were a constant thorn, as we know, in the side for black Americans, and this is particularly the case in the South where they want to stop. Um, black people getting the vote and the way they would do this is by three ways literacy tests poll taxes and what was known as the grandfather clause now the literacy tests were basically if you think about with schools if you didn't have the right facilities to learn if there was poor education or black Americans who couldn't even get the schools due to transport issues due to how far away their nearest all black school would be the literacy rates weren't great, so passing a literacy test before you could vote was actually a big obstacle in the South. And it was also a big thing because this is 1940s we're looking at here, and 1865 is when the Civil War ended. So people who had been slaves were banned from reading and writing. So they could, you know, like so for example, they wouldn't be allowed to forge travel passes to get out of the South during the period of slavery, say, no, I've got permission from a white master. They weren't allowed to read and write. So this poor literacy could pass down. You wouldn't have the support from a parent or an elder or a grandparent in helping you with reading, basic reading and writing or schoolwork because they might not be able due to this, right? So there were problems there. So this literacy test was a huge obstacle stopping black Americans voting. You also had a problem with polls, with poll taxes, where you had to pay a tax before you voted. Now, with black Americans having the poorer jobs, um, access to the poorer wages, and obviously you were going to <coughs> look out for your own, you know, supplying food, shelter, protecting your family first. Paying a tax might just be too far, something you cannot afford or not seen as a good use of your money. So these poll taxes on top of literacy tests were another huge obstacle in the way. Now obviously literacy and poll taxes could be a problem as well if you're a white American. So the way they got round this was what was called the grandfather clause. And it basically said, <coughs> if you had a grandfather who could vote before the Civil War, then you didn't have to pay the literacy to, uh, you didn't have to take the literacy test, you didn't have to pay the poll tax, you could vote automatically. So this was a way out for white Americans. So you can see the decks being stacked. Now, when America goes into World War II, this is huge for black Americans because basically going into fight, you're fighting against a racist regime in Nazi Germany and you're fighting for freedom, you're fighting for rights. So you can imagine <coughs> how black Americans must have felt when they went to fight in Europe and to fight for America to find that they were treated in the American armed forces as second class citizens and the armed forces were segregated between black and white regiments so there was a big big problem however this started to change in January of 1945 where you started to see um, the army integrate so desegregation started to stop in armed forces and sailors were even being promoted in the American Navy so you could see why there would be a hope for black Americans coming back from uh, World War II that there might be a start towards civil rights and freedoms when they got home. This wasn't going to happen. Um, not at all, actually, we know that, right? But also another problem was, um, well, it started off where America going into World War II, like Europe, was in depression. And jobs were created in the armed forces, but also making weaponry. 
and equipment and keeping America going during the war. And black Americans too would fill these jobs. So you did see some black Americans leaving the South and farming jobs and agriculture work behind to go into the factories in the North and produce whatever was needed. Um, and this would cause an issue because black Americans firstly, just like in the South, would have the worst pay, they would often have the worst jobs, but you also found that black Americans did not have access to the proper training they would need to get promoted. So you couldn't really bet yourself, or you rarely could bet yourself if you're a black American, because usually you found they didn't get the proper training to pursue promotion and therefore better wages. Um, you also had problems in the factories because white Americans would be resenting black Americans. It's a bit like the issue of um, the immigrants, where they said, well, the black Americans were being employed because they work for less. So why are you appointing black people instead of white? And you're also seeing um, this fear if black people are being protested from some of the white workforce, uh, protested, um, employed. You're seeing protests from the white workforce saying, why are you appointing black over white anyway? So they, they would still leave racist attitudes, even in the North. So the end result would be that in the North, as well as the South, you would have poorer pay, poorer jobs, um, and in the North, you couldn't get these promotions. So that meant, just like in the South, where you had the poorer places to live, in the North, it meant that black Americans were those who were going into the ghettos with the poorer house qualities and the poorer living conditions because they couldn't afford the rent and they couldn't afford the better housing that was there for white Americans and the higher paid jobs. Now, after World War II, one of the big issues that America faced was communism. Um, this had started obviously with the, um, the whole like, Red Scare that came in at the back end of World War I. However, this has just got worse at the end of World War II when communism was seen as like the new enemy for the Western world and particularly for America. And you get arguments coming from some white Americans where they're saying, well, <laughs> how can you say about communism where they don't give people their freedoms and they live in a dictatorship when there are black Americans living in America who don't have freedom either? Right? So there is huge criticism coming towards um, fighting against and arguing against communism when black Americans weren't free in America. And this was heightened because the television was starting to replace the radio in people's houses. And obviously the visual image became more powerful and it was bringing home these, um, these images of what was happening to black Americans in the South in particular. But also, as we know, in the 1920s, people were getting cars then, so travel was becoming more common and people could go on holidays, they could travel, go on trips into the South in particular and see firsthand what black Americans were going through. So this is starting to really spread around in the USA that there was an issue. So how did they get around this? Well, basically, um, people argued back and said, well, the reason why we can have a go at communism is because a communist idea um, was race mixing. So mixing of races is a communist idea. So they started to say, well, if you support racism, uh, race mixing, you therefore are a communist. So if you supported mixing of races, if you supported of integrating black and white people together, you were a communist. And no one wanted this tag or label at all. And, they, and in Alabama, which was the, like basically the heart of this deep south, as bad as it got, they banned the NAACP, the National Association for the Advancement of Coloured People, for this to say they are basically a communist organisation. Now, the president during World War II was uh, Roosevelt, and he died in 1945. And his vice president, Harry Truman, um, became uh, president in his place. And Truman was from the South. He was from Missouri himself. And Truman basically um, had a history of, in his past of racism. He even paid $10 to be a member of the KKK in the past. Now, the story is that when Truman became president and he saw all these heroic black soldiers returning from World War II, facing violence when asking for civil rights, facing huge racist issues, particularly in the South, he was disgusted. These were, he saw these as returning war heroes who deserve respect. And Truman decided he had to use his position as president and basically in charge of the Democrat Party in America to get black people better rights, in particular the vote. So Truman set up the Committee of Civil Rights and he also published 
a report called to, um, uh, called to secure these rights, which was in 1947, I believe. And the report said black Americans basically needed um, the government and the laws of the country, the, you know, the police, etc., to support them, to protect them. So they needed protecting from lynchings happening where black Americans will be seized without a trial and just hanged by racist mobs. They needed voting rights to be looked out for and protected. Um, this segregation had to stop, right? Desegregation had to happen. And they needed an honest police force that had to make sure that they were professional and not allowing racist attitudes to spill forward and, and, and you know, influence their work. Um, and basically what happens is he'd set the ball rolling and he also brings in his committee on government contract compliance. And he said that basically um, any government-backed company, the civil service, etc., you cannot discriminate in employment. You have to give black people a fair chance at these jobs so there would not be government support or backing for anyone in government jobs or the civil service if they wouldn't hire black Americans. Um, and Truman basically was motivated by the racism that was in his past, his connections to the KKK, and the anger he had when he saw black American soldiers being treated so badly when they returned from World War II. And he actually had two black Americans in federal positions, including Ralph Bunch, who was given the position of ambassador to the United Nations, which was huge. Now, same time period, and you'll be hearing about this, the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People, the NAACP, their, their influence is constantly growing. Um, we all know about Rosa Parks, I hope, but they actually had been a, a case before this. <coughs> it was Irene Morgan versus Virginia, which was basically where she won a Supreme Court case against Virginia, which is a state, regarding the bus laws and segregation. Um, this was in 1947. And you've also got the NAACP support of bus boycotts in Louisiana in 1953. And they also got involved in Louisiana in Lafayette in 1951 in the school boycott again about you know um, schools being segregated and should be desegregated so the precedents were there before really the, the famous cases came out and the NAACP were huge investigating lynching as well and they were trying to reduce um, lynching of black Americans following World War II because this was just happening too well one lynching is too often so thanks for watching folks